Welcome to Seven Pot Club. I'm Rob. I grow hot peppers. Today is June 19th, and it's my birthday. So, what am I doing on my special day? For me, it's just like any other Tuesday. I'm recording and preparing my weekly Wednesday Seven Pot Club episode. We're having a few friends and neighbors over later for cocktails and chuckles, so I need to get busy so I can knock off early this evening. It's been raining here for days. The plants are waterlogged and yearning for sun. That sun should finally come tomorrow. I hope. Way back at the beginning of April, we started our topping experiment, cutting the tops off pepper plants to make them bushier and increase production. It's time again for us to check in on some of the plants we topped and see how they've done. I've got to be honest with you, the results are mixed. Some plants seem to have benefited from topping and others not. I'll show you. Let's get started. You know we cut off the tops of the pepper plants. Plants, they ask what's up with that. Said I'm only doing what's best for you. Now we'll find out if it's really true. Was it? First off, let's look at the first plants we pruned back on April the 2nd. Two of them, Shishido and Wink's Yellow Hot, are in our square garden bed. Here are the Shishido plants. The one on the left is the pruned plant. As you can see, it's bushier but smaller than the control plant on the right. Both plants are already pumping out a lot of peppers. It's been very wet and I haven't been out here for a couple of days to see what needs to be picked to encourage growth. I picked a lot of peppers after shooting this footage. Both plants look good, and it's hard to choose a winner. Now, let's check the Wink's Yellow Hot. Again, the one on the left is the pruned plant. In this case, the pruned plant is both bushier and taller than the control plant. The untopped plant is putting its energy into producing fruit instead of growing, and I can't seem to dissuade it. In this case, the prune plant is definitely the winner. Here are the little elves. Once more, the one on the left is the pruned plant. It's looking good and producing tons of peppers. But look at the plant on the right. It's obviously a cross because the peppers are larger and fatter than they should be. It looks good too, but it's hard to make a comparison since the varieties are not identical. I believe these were both planted from the same batch of saved seeds, so my fault if there was an unintended cross. Time for a sad story. The plant on the left is the one we topped. It's looking really good, even if it does have a small amount of four-lined plant bug damage. The plant on the right is one of about a half a dozen plants swamped during our recent rains. These plants didn't seem to like getting soaked followed by mid-90 degree temps and suddenly decided to drop all their leaves in protest. It's pretty unusual for this to happen. I'm glad it wasn't widespread. I somehow failed this plant, and for that, I'm sorry. Now, back to the square bed for a happier scene. The Serrano del Sol on the left was pruned on April 27th and looks better in every way compared to the unpruned plant on the right. How about these two super hot beasts? The one on the left was pruned on April the 9th. Both look pretty good, and it's hard to pick which one looks best. Here are two chocolate reapers, also pruned on April the 9th. The pruned plant is on the left, and although it's not easy to see from this angle, it's definitely larger and fuller than the untopped plant. Both of these plants have suffered four-lined plant bug damage, but they're doing okay. For more info on four-line bugs, check out last week's video. I'll include a link in the description. Now, let's take a look at two HP 22B Carolina Reapers from the last of the original batch of seed I got several years back. The one on the right is the top plant. 
It's substantially smaller than the unpruned plant, but look at how full it is. We'll check back later in the season to see if it catches up. Finally, let me show you two other Shido plants, both topped on May 7th and transplanted into the garden seconds apart. The plant on the left is dramatically larger, while the plant on the right seems focused on pumping out fruit instead of growing. If you view these two plants soon after planting, you can see a size difference, but it's still more dramatic than I would expect after a few weeks of outdoor growth. There are many more top plants growing throughout the yard, and we'll check back in once more later in the season. Topping has worked out well for many plants and not so well for others. Some of the differences may have to do with when we cut and how much we cut. We'll try and learn from the experience and do a better job next year. If you have any tips or suggestions on topping, please share them in the comments. That's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed the topping update. I wish I had a more definitive answer on the benefits of topping hot pepper plants, and maybe I will as we get farther along in the growing season. I also hope the rain stops soon. Although I'm shooting this on Tuesday, the video behind me is from Wednesday. I hope it shows a garden drenched in sun. Fingers crossed. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and please subscribe to our channel and tap the bell next to the subscribe button to receive notifications. We'll debut a new video every week throughout the growing season, and you won't want to miss an episode. For Seven Pot Club, I'm Rob.